Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Mahindra Holidays and Resorts India Limited Q4 FY22 Earnings Conference Call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now have the conference over to Mr. Kavinder Singh. Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer from Mahindra Holidays and Resorts India Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to our quarter four earnings call. On the call with me today, we have Mr. Sujit Vaidya, our Chief Financial Officer, Dandraj Mulki, our General Counsel and Company Secretary. You can find our quarter four and full year results and investor presentation referred to in our remarks today on the stock exchanges and on our company website. I hope you all have had a chance to go through them. I'm happy to share that we have delivered a strong operational and financial performance both in Q4 and in FY22 despite Delta and Omicron waves. I would like to attribute this to the flexibility and adaptability of our teams ability to ramp up and ramp down resort operations, commitment of our members, power of our brand, and the inherent strength and resilience of our business model. Demand for domestic leisure travel started to gain momentum from mid-February onwards due to easing of mobile mobility restrictions. Backed by the pent up demand, festive travel demand around Holi, long weekends, and of course, now the summer travel. Across the industry, fastest recovery was witnessed in occupancy and ARRs uh, for the leisure portfolio. We have witnessed tailwinds such as growing domestic air travel uh, as high as 21 million in March 22 from a low of 13 million in January 22. Higher demand for leisure holidays family bonding through multi-generational travel, drivable leisure destinations, increase in outdoor activities, preference for immersive experiences, willingness of travelers to invest in a rejuvenation, rejuvenating vacation to enhance their mental and physical well-being is something that we have witnessed at our resorts and the trends that we are witnessing. A quick recap of the year gone by, Q1 was challenging due to the Delta wave with occupancies of 51% and a resort income of only rupees 15 crores. However, we started to see quick recovery post the Delta wave and since then the graph has been upwards with quarter two and quarter three occupancies at 73 and 80% respectively with resort incomes of about 51 crores and 70 crores respectively. In December 21, early January 22, when the Omicron wave hit, we saw lower occupancies in January 22. However, the recovery was much quicker compared to the earlier waves, leading to the highest ever resort income of rupees 57 crores in quarter four. We have noticed in quarter four uh, uh, not only the increase in occupancies, but even at a full year level, when we look at the occupancy, they were at 74%, and for the full uh, quarter, fourth quarter, we had an occupancy of 77%. And also, in the month of March, we saw an 89% occupancy uh, in March 22. And of course, uh, we have also noticed that we have crossed highest ever occupied room nights in the month of March. Similar trends have been witnessed in April also. 88 to 89% occupancy is what we have closed with. And of course, uh, a lot of our resorts are crossing 90% plus occupancy levels. We are witnessing a rise in bookings based on what we are seeing. We are noticing a similar trend in May and June, 
and the occupancies in May and June are looking as of now above 85 percent. And we believe that the domestic leisure travel demand will continue. If you recall, throughout the pandemic, we have continued to focus on three major drivers of our business growth. Number one, accelerating inventory additions. Number two, growing our member base. Number three, driving resort revenues through F&B services and immersive experiences at our resorts. Our inventory built up continued to progress as planned and during the year, we, had it, we added 385 rooms. And in quarter four, four, we added 226 rooms. Resorts that have been added in domestic destinations include Leh, Raman, Long, Rameshwaram, Indi in Andhra Pradesh, Pushkar in Rajasthan, and also international destinations such as Bali, in Tota in Sri Lanka, and Pattaya in Thailand. These additions take our total resorts to 84 level. So our resort count hits 84. We have crossed the milestone of 4,500 plus keys. To put this in perspective, we have added 800 plus rooms during the two years of the pandemic versus 1,300 rooms over a six-year period from FY15 to FY20. So obviously, the inventory addition has accelerated. Our target is to achieve 5,500 plus rooms in the next 24 to 30 months through multiple ways, acquisition of greenfield properties, uh, acquisition of brownfield properties, greenfield development, utilizing our existing land banks, expansion of our existing resorts, and of course through leasing. We have commenced construction to expand our existing resort at Kandagat Shimla. That expansion will be uh, will require us to invest about 200 crores and will deliver 185 rooms. We are already uh, uh, at the last stages of getting the last permissions to set up a resort in Ganpati Phule with about 236 keys with a total investment of about 250 crores. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we are uh, also planning to add 60 keys to our existing resort in Puducherry, and we are also likely to have 52 additional keys coming to our resort in Udaipur, which is expected to be completed in June 2022. I'm also happy to announce that we have been recently awarded a very boutique project under the PPP model in Chanjeli in Mandi district in Himachal Pradesh. As I have always mentioned that we continue to add choices for our members under a new program which is called Club Mahindra Horizon. We have 300 plus partner hotels to which our members can go to additional vacation destinations and this Club Mahindra Horizon is our proprietary holiday exchange program. Probably the first program for any kind share company uh, 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 that has ever been launched. Turning to member additions in quarter four, we have had a member addition of 4,058 members. This is very, very good considering the fact that in the month of January, we had significant problems because a lot of our sales team was not well due to Omicron, and we really recovered smartly in February and March. While Omicron has ended, the wave has receded sometime in February, we noticed that our member additions really picked up some time every till about March. Uh, in view of the inflationary pressures, we have noticed that families now understand that vacation ownership is a preferred way to vacation in a period where travel costs are rising. And this is an opportunity for them to look at Club Mahindra. And this we see as a very big positive for our business. They also realize the first the travelers also realize the ease of planning vacations, uh, increasing choice of resorts, experiences, spacious properties, and allowing for multi-generational travel, which is definitely you know helping to uh, helping families to bond with each other. Uh, if I were to look at uh, the year during the year, our member additions grew by six percent on a year-on-year -year basis, 
to about 12,764 members despite multiple COVID waves. Our co cumulative member base now stands at 2.66 lakhs. If you multiply three to four members per family, we are talking about a million cohort which actually enjoys our resorts year on year. While the member count has grown by 6% year on year, the sales value of the member additions grew by 24% year on year in FY22. And this is something that we are extremely proud of. This has been due to the, uh, obviously, the uh, higher uh, sales of uh, Club Mahindra 25-year product, also the Bliss product, and, of course, some amount of benefit we got from the average unit realization, which was driven by the price increases that we took during the year. In quarter four, FY22, our strategy of enrolling higher down payment contribution continued. We saw a significant improvement in the number of members who are paying higher down payment at the time of enrollment. Uh, sales contribution from referrals and digital has increased to 57% in quarter four. Last year, same time, this number was 54%. We have actually initiated a lot of work on acquiring customers through digital by introducing fresh and relevant content. Our diverse product portfolio has helped us upsell and improve sales realizations. We have seen very good movement in upgrades during the year as the members decided to move to a higher season or higher, larger apartment. Uh, vacations at our resorts and marketing activities in towns around our resorts helped us to increase the on-site sales, which is a key focus area for us. Let's move on to the third major driver of growth, resort revenues. As mentioned on previous calls, over the past several quarters, we have taken initiatives to create superlative member experiences to enhance member spends and improve member engagement. Highest ever resort income in fourth quarter, 85% year-on-year growth in resort income, leading to 193 crores income in FY22, despite multiple COVID waves, is a significant achievement. Resort revenues per occupied room night during the year were higher through member spends on F&B and other activities. We have introduced multiple culinary experiences and also launched new specialty restaurants. Uh, some of the restaurants you may be familiar with, Barbecue Bay. There is a new fine dining Pan-Asian restaurant called Temptation and Finn's, which is a seafood brand restaurant, seafood, seafood cuisine restaurant. We launched Unwind, which is a, a cafe lounge. We have introduced new resort-based experiences, particularly in the area of themed adventure parks. As you know, we have invested in Rocksport. And through Rocksport, we are bringing these new experiences in our resorts. Uh, refurbished Happy Hub, new experiences in Happy Hub, new spa and wellness treatments, birthdays and anniversary packages, and also celebrating various festivals. As members spent more time inside our resorts, we introduced all-inclusive packages for members and their families at a discount, including the option to pre-purchase. This has helped us drive member spends. Outdoor experiences, as I mentioned earlier, which are soft adventure, but in addition to that, we added nature treks, family picnics, bird watching, and guided uh, electric bike tours. They have also been introduced. I did mention about Rocksport. We have increased the investment in Rocksport from 6.67%. Our stake has increased from 6.67% to 23.4%. This will happen by September 22 as the transaction completes. This, we believe, will help us to increase customer engagement avenues. The most interesting part of this investment is that we will have their skill, the Rocksport skill, and through that, we will launch more and more theme adventure parks in our resorts. Also, virtual uh, games like Virtual Skydiver, Pandora's Box, Box etc., would be also launched as we speak. And more importantly, we will be able to target their customer base, which is the exact target group for us, and our members in cities will be able to use Rocksport facilities with, with a certain level of discount, which will help us to get also uh, referrals from our members. At this point of time, Rocksport will also act as a driver for 
driving the vacation traffic so that people can engage in these experiences, outdoor experiences, and which we, which we believe will help us increase our on-site sales. And of course, uh, in the on-site, we just do not add fresh units, but also we upgrade, and that will also be a positive thing for us as we move forward. Of course, there are inflationary pressures on our F&B costs, fuel costs, LPG costs. We have taken price increases across our F&B services in April 2022. Uh, we, to manage the resort costs, we are also working very closely with Edible Oil and other vendors. We have installed solar power at 14, uh, solar plants at 14 resorts with a total capacity of 2,500 plus kilowatts power of the above. During Q4, the fast track solar installations by adding 350 kilowatt power at two resorts. Further, 1000 plus KWP is ready for installation in Q1 FY23. There are lots of ESG initiatives that I would like to highlight. And I am very confident the actions that our team is taking. We will be the most sustainable resort chain in the world. Already, uh, we, have, uh, we, have, we are aiming to achieve carbon neutrality by 2040 through our EP100 which is the energy productivity improvement by 100%, 100% renewable energy. Uh, we have committed uh, these, uh, these declarations have been done by us. And again, we are well on our way. And by the way, we have done calculations through the science-based targets. And we, will be, we are very confident of reducing our greenhouse emissions by 88.3% by 2030. We have implemented the Gulf Even Initiative to improve efficiency of water utilization using 4R principles of redu reducing, reusing, recycling, and rainwater harvesting. Rainwater harvesting structures are installed in 20 resorts. 250 million liters of total water consumed by our resorts has been recycled in FY22. Four resorts are certified under zero waste to landfill, and our endeavor remains to, be, to responsibly source materials and to work towards creating a circular economy. Under Project Haryali, we have planted 70,000 trees in the last two years uh, and almost 4.7 since FY11 near our resorts. And we have undertaken biodiversity initiatives at our Purg resorts and Asanora Goa resorts to conserve natural forest area. Importantly, please note we are founding members of Indian Green Building Council. We are committed to green resort certification of all our resorts by 2024. Currently, eight resorts have received the highest level of green certification, which is platinum. On that note, let's take a few minutes to look at our standalone financial performance for performance of Holiday Club Resorts, our material subsidiary. Standalone results, revenue grows by 19.4% YOY. Our VO income grew by 12.4% YOY. Resort income, highest ever in the fourth quarter. Yes, there is a one-off. We have sold our investment in the NDH online services at about uh, netting a gain of 26.3 crores, almost a 9x return, considering that we had taken this stake in 2016, a 12% stake with an investment of 3 crores. Uh, the reason for us to exit this investment is that their business model, this startup's business model has pivoted, and the strategic linkage or the reason for which we had invested no longer exists, and there was an opportunity and that opportunity has been utilized, and therefore there is a one-off income of 26.3 crores that you see in quarter four. By the way, we continue to use their employee engagement platform, which is something that they have pivoted to very successfully, even in Mahindra holidays, even after exiting the investment. Total income grown, has grown by 18% YOY. Uh, vacation ownership grown, income has grown by 7%. Uh, resort income has grown by 85%. Our operational efficiency stands at 74%, again 72% for the year. When you look at one-off profit from the sale of investment of Enrich, I mentioned, there have been some lease rent waivers, and there was an interest income that happened from the income tax refund that we got. So that is where we have classified one-off income for you to be able to understand what are the one-off and what are the routine operational uh, growth items so that it's easier for you to see how our numbers stack up. If I look at the profits and margins, PBT has grown by 82%, but if I remove the one-time impact, even then the growth is quite healthy at 37% YOY. 
PPT margin without one time impact is still up by 200 basis points on year on year basis. Profit after tax uh, stands at 45 crores. Uh, for the full year, if I were to look at profit before tax at 200 crores, which is 20% up, YOY, EBT margin is at about 19%. Uh, EBT without small one-time impact at rupees uh, stands at 160 crores, which is up by 16% year on year. And PPT margin without one-time impact stands at 16%. Very healthy margins even during this difficult year. And the PAT at 151 crores is up by 20%. Total expenses for FY2, I'm talking a little bit about the expenses now, uh, have increased by 17%, mainly on account of higher business activity, higher sales volume, marketing spends and overheads. Sales and marketing expenses increased by 34 crores in line with the uh, additional sales volume, customer related offers, investments in TV and brand marketing campaigns. These investments are going to uh, augur well for our future. There are other expenses which have grown in line with the increased business activity. Some uh, costs are expected to be permanent in nature. Savings. When I say costs are expected, cost savings are expected to be permanent in nature. That will not come back with the volume and this will help us drive substantial margin improvement going forward. Moving to digital has helped us in reducing infra cost, travel cost and other related overheads. Manpower utilization at our resorts and a reduction in our employee to room ratio has happened. As a result of our growth, we have been able to redeploy uh, people. We have saved significant amount of money due to solar implementation in various resorts. Currently, 14 resorts have solar energy panels, which we are, uh, the solar energy is streaming into these resorts. We have been reviewing and uh, looking at all fixed costs and trying to convert them into variable costs. And that's something particularly in the area of acquisition. And that is something that is playing out as we speak now. More on that later. Uh, as far as uh, structural changes go, this is going to be our single biggest initiative to convert as many of our fixed costs into variable costs. And Therefore, as we move forward, the overall cost and operation, operational efficiencies will begin to play even an increased uh, 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 role in the profitability and the margin improvement. Uh, if I were to look at the balance sheet, uh, deferred revenue for the quarter stands at 5,083 crores. This is, this is something which we have seen has moved up by about one crore, two odd crores from the same period, which is March 21. And we continue to have zero debt at a standalone level. Our cash position improved significantly by 232 crores to end up at 1172 crores, 1172 crores as on March 22. Our cash position movement is due to higher resort revenue, more member additions, better upgrade revenue, higher down payments, lower EMI tenure, continuous tight control on costs in all areas of operations have helped us to increase our cash position. This concludes my commentary on Mahindra holidays. I move on to now holiday club resorts. As we speak, our quarterly con call coincides with Prime Minister Modi's participation in the historic India Nordic Summit which is currently ongoing. The India Nordic Summit will strengthen bilateral relationships between India, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and Iceland. This augurs well for our Holiday Club Resort business, which is the leading hospitality provider in Finland. Uh, a quick look on the Holiday Club Resort's macro situation and operational update. During the year, COVID impacted our Finnish operations in quarter one, quarter three, and part of quarter four, except in quarter two, where we saw significant dom domestic travel demand. In quarter four, once restrictions were, were eased off in mid-February 2022, the recovery was rapid and strong. This was followed by the Russian-Ukraine conflict, which has, which has impacted the Finnish economy. The growth estimates of Finnish economy have been revised downwards from 3% to 1.5%. 
Inflation is something that we are watching out and we will see how it goes. But preliminary indications are the energy prices are likely to be higher or already are higher. If you were to look at quarter four for our holiday club resorts business, uh, the revenue has increased by 9.7 million euros primarily due to growth of spa hotels revenue which has grown by 96% year on year in Finland as well as Sweden in line with occupancy. Timeshare sales increased by 32% year on year due to a strong and swift recovery post the restrictions being lifted. COVID impacted for the full year as I mentioned earlier, except Q2, revenues at the full year level have increased by 23% and 51% increase was seen in spa hotels due to higher ARRs and increased f and income. Despite multiple COVID waves, which impacted construction as well as sales, timeshare revenues have increased by 6% year on year. The best news comes now, the profitability in quarter four, positive EBITDA of 0.6 million euro was delivered. In FY22, Holiday Club has resort, resorts has delivered close to break even EBITDA of uh, minus 0.3 million euro. Several cost optimization measures were introduced during the year. Despite severe COVID-19 impact on business operations, FY22, HCR managed to reduce its loss before tax by 61% year-on-year to 5.9 million euro versus FY21. This is a significant achievement considering a very large part of the year was impacted by the multiple COVID waves. The good news is that while the restrictions on restaurants, spas, sports and indoor activities have eased off from mid-February, thereby having a very good recovery in our uh, Finland and Sweden business. The crisis in Ukraine is people ask us as to how, what impact it will have on travel and tourism in Finland. As you know, Holiday Club Resorts operates in the leisure segment and the leisure segment is largely focused on domestic travel. The domestic travel is not likely to get impacted. Uh, the Finns and the Swedes and the Norwegians will continue to travel. However, the, there will be some inflationary effects which I have mentioned, primarily in the area of energy and the consequent impacts. But we still believe the domestic leisure travel is strong and having achieved close to break-even EBITDA in FY22, we are very positive for the FY23 outlook as far as holiday club resorts go. Let me move on to the consolidated performance. The total income at the consolidated level in quarter four is up at a healthy 18%. EBITDA moved up by 70% year on year. Margin at a healthy level of 22%. And our PPT stands at 32 crores, which is an improvement of rupees 43 crores over quarter four FY21. If I were to look at the consolidated full year financial numbers, total income has been up 18%. And our EBITDA at a consolidated level is up at 38% YOY and EBITDA margin stands at 22.1%. And our PPT at 111 crores, which is an improvement of 808 crores over FY21. PAT at rupees 68 crores is the highest ever since the adoption of index 115 in FY19. A PAT improved by rupees 82 crores over FY21. Inclusion, to sum up, I'm really encouraged with, to see how we have closed FY22 and the momentum we are carrying on into FY23. We expect good times ahead for leisure as evidenced from the current booking trends that we are seeing, which are, which are, which are visible to us all the way up to July. Even July, we are seeing above 80% occupancy, which is not traditionally a seasonal month. The underlying strength in our business comes from the fact that we have built some amazing resorts and now more importantly our focus on accelerating our inventory is evident through the addition of 800 plus keys during the two years of pandemic. In today's inflationary environment, timeshare is the need of the hour and people understand 
there are clear benefits of owning a club mahindra membership we continue to focus on the right membership portfolio mix of medium and long tenure products in line with our long term strategy going forward notwithstanding any further covid wave and related restrictions we expect the pace of member additions to uh, hasten up we expect the pace of member additions to grow in fy23 and the sales contribution from referrals digital and on site sales will continue to grow as we embark on our growth phase we have made a conscious effort toward advancing front ending our investments for the future by priorities by prioritizing brand building marketing initiatives and also ensuring that we are ready for the future this we believe will help us immensely as the strong demand uh, comes in leisure travel as we are already beginning to see therefore our focus on our three core key growth drivers accelerating member additions growing our member base and driving resort revenues to creating unique fnb services and outdoor experiences has held us in good stead and is reflected in our growth both in top line bottom line and cash generation holiday club resorts under the leadership of ms maisa romanainen has demonstrated a strong and quick recovery whenever restrictions were eased off largely driven by domestic demand we haven't seen any major impact of the russia ukraine conflict hence we are confident of the profitability and cash generation capabilities of the holiday club resorts we definitely expect the financial of holiday club resorts will reflect these capabilities as they play out during the year esg remains a focus area for us and i did enumerate our achievements and we expect this to be a very important part of our business and we treat it as an important part of our business as we emerge out of the pandemic finally fy23 is going to be an important and transformational year for us as we lay the groundwork for our long term success thank you for your time this evening we are now open we are now opening the line for questions thank you very much once again thank you Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one on your touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ankit Kanodia from SmartSync Services. Please go ahead. Thank you, uh, and congratulations for good set of numbers. Uh, if we look at the member doom ratio, uh, and if we look at the number for the whole of last 10 years so we are probably at all time low as in all time lowest number in terms of member room ratio uh, around 58 so in the last 10 years we have been as high as 77 one and uh, this is probably it has been trending down in the last few years and to date is the lowest and even if we take the uh, projection of 5500 rooms going forward in the next 12 to uh, sorry 24 to 30 months and uh, just do a backup the envelope calculation for the number of members taking in account the same number of member addition but which we had this year it will come down to around 55 so just wanted to know your uh, view as to uh, are you satisfied with this number or are you pushing for uh, an even lower number or what is your view on that that, that would be my first question thank you it's a very very uh, relevant question uh, i think uh, the fact that we have added inventory during the pandemic period and because of the pandemic our member additions sort of got impacted therefore the ratio has improved but the reason we are adding inventory at a brisk pace is that we believe that while we have been comfortable even at a 60s to 1 kind of a ratio we believe that even if we are at 1 is to 58 1 is to 55 even lower we believe that there is a huge opportunity for uh, you know having uh, an opportunity to serve existing members 
because members, you know, even with this ratio, I can I mentioned to you that our occupancies are hovering at 90% occupancy. So we are seeing huge traction. There are memberships who have been dormant. People have not been holidaying. They are also now holidaying. And we believe that this kind of inventory addition growth path will allow us to actually enable us to enroll more and more members because we would never be worried about not being able to take care about the members' booking needs. We are very clear that this path is the right path. As far as we are concerned, there will be times when inventory additions will run ahead of members. We normally do not want member addition to run ahead of inventory. So even if it goes down to 55, 53, 52, we are very comfortable because there is always an opportunity to bring to request members to bring their guests and they do bring and that helps us to get more sales on site. So we are very, very positive about higher inventory because we have established our brand. Our rooms are not going to go empty. For sure, members will bring their guests and that is one of the biggest routes we adopt to get uh, new member additions on site. Internationally, uh, a lot of membership sales, rather the majority of the membership sales happens at the resorts. In India, we tend to go out into people's homes to get the membership uh, enrollment. But when we have inventory availability, that will have a positive kicker for us, particularly on the on-site sales, which we are looking forward to. Thank you. That, that really helps. My second question is regarding uh, the reserves on the book. So after three years, uh, due to that uh, accounting change, uh, first time we are seeing the reserves to be uh, a positive number, although a very small number, but still it's positive. So are we thinking something on the lines of uh, dividend or buyback, or it is too early to say that? So please remember that, uh, you know, the dividend declaration is a function of our ability to generate profits, and that was never, ever got compromised, even the new accounting standard. If you look at our profit before tax, profit after tax on standalone numbers, we have grown at a very healthy rate. You know, just the, the year that we got into the old accounting, uh, the new accounting standard, our profit was 100 crores. Even if you were to remove these one-offs that I talked about, which is the uh, sale of the you know, investment in the end reach, even if you were to remove the other one-offs that I talked, which are lease rent waivers, we're still at 160 crores on a like-to-like -like basis. In three years, we have moved from 100 to 160 crores, which means we always had the capacity to pay a dividend. We have cash. There is a issue that when we moved into the new accounting standard, there is a transition difference which has hit our reserves. And as a result of that, and this is something that we have been trying to represent to the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, and the moment we get clarification from them, we should be in a position to declare dividend. Our dividend declaration has nothing to do with our ability to generate profits. Our profits have been constantly being generated. It is only at the consolidated level. Because of the two years of pandemic, we have seen some struggle. And that also, as you rightly mentioned, this year we have come out of it. And we have had a very good, highest, highest ever consolidated VAT particularly uh, after the new accounting standard came in. So, uh, I, I couldn't oh, get my sorry, answer. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Kanodia, may we request that you return to the question queue so that participants sure. waiting for the turn. Sure. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference, we request you to limit your questions to two per participant only. The next question is in the line of Nihal Jam from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you so much and good evening to the entire management. Uh, my first question was on the member addition side. You did mention that there was an impact uh, because of Omicron, which led to a deferment in terms of a lot of sales being made. So would it just be possible, because uh, from your commentary, it did look like March and April have seemed to be going pretty well. It's just from the March month, what was like the YOI growth in member addition, if it's possible to highlight that? Yeah, so uh, Nihal, what happened is that January we got severely impacted because uh, quite a lot of our salespeople were also unwell. It was quite widespread. 
yes. and uh, February onwards we started picking up and March of course we did very well and uh, April is going on very well. The main point to note is that you know despite the fact that we had such a uh, difficult start we ended up crossing the 4000 mark for our member additions number, number one. Number two, uh, you may have caught on the fact that I mentioned that while our full year growth is only 7% is because of these two waves, but yeah. on a value basis, we have grown by 24% on a YOY basis. So while the two numbers look very close to each other, that there was only a 7% growth in the member additions, but our value growth is at a high of 24% on a YOY basis. So that's something that is uh, to be noted. And uh, the momentum did pick up in March and continued into the April as well. Yeah. Sure, uh, that's helpful. The other thing is uh, you mentioned uh, that you've taken a hike in your membership rate. I just wanted to confirm that. And if you could give the AOR number for this quarter, that would be helpful. Um, in terms of, uh, yes, we have taken the price increases. Uh, we, we did that uh, earlier uh, in the year. And uh, in terms of the AUR, I will share that separately, Nihal, uh, was this call. Oh, sure. I'll come back in the queue after the question. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Himanshu Shah from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. A couple of particular questions. Can you give the breakup of uh, cost? Sorry to of... Interrupt. Uh, Mr. Shah, your voice is breaking up. Hello. Are you able to hear me now? Yeah, a little better. Let's see how it goes. Uh, so can you just give the cost breakup of sales and marketing, rent, and other opens for the quarter? Where the investor take up? Take the, the, the elements of the cost, sales and marketing separated from the... And so it, it is there in our... Uh, it was in the investor deck, I think, so this time. No, on the investor deck, it is definitely there. I have seen the breakup of employee yeah, benefits. Uh, if you go to the slide number... What 33. 33 in our investor deck, whatever breakup you are wanting is there. Right. right. Uh, uh, secondly, XCRO, can you just uh, uh, the debt number at OCO and Volco level both? We are not able to hear your question. There's some echoing happening from your side. Okay. I could only hear Holdco, XCR, that's all. I could not hear anything more. The XCRO debt number for OCO and Volco level. XCR debt number at what level? Holdco and Operating company level. Operating company level. Go ahead. So at the uh, at the uh, holding company level, uh, we have a 51 million uh, debt, uh, which was for the acquisition. And then uh, at the operating company, which is the HCR uh, level, that is close to around 16 million euros. Okay. And so last question, uh, Zoom addition that we are targeting for FY23 specifically, some color can you provide? Room additions for FY23. Ah, room additions for FY23. Okay. So as I mentioned, uh, we do not give forward guidance in terms of how many rooms we'll add, as you know, for various reasons. But what we definitely have charted out as our target that we need to move in the next 24 to 30 months, we have to cross the 5,500 mark. So that is how uh, it was there in my commentary that we are looking within the next two to two and a half years, we should cross the 5,500 mark. We are at 4,568 as we speak now. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of DK Shah from Hansa Research. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, congratulations on a very good set of numbers and a very detailed and very constructive investor presentation uploaded on the exchange. Sir, uh, can I request you to please elaborate on how you see the lifetime value of a customer and how you see the value creation building up over time? I think there's a very interesting slide uh, in the investor deck, but it would be very helpful to hear your view on this. Okay, so... Uh... 
I think um, first of all, thank you for picking up that slide, which we had, uh, which we have sort of done with a lot of diligence and care. You see, what happens is that in our business, when we get a member in, uh, that's just the beginning, um, because you know while we collect the membership fee, that helps us to build resorts or lease resorts or do whatever to sort of provide the services, including the CRM and also the uh, member services because all those things get set up for the member the moment the member buys the membership and the membership fee is hugely helpful to ensure that we are able to create supply and take care of the servicing part of it however the uh, real uh, you know value add to the business and to the customer happens when the customers or the members begin to holiday at our resorts uh, they pay the annual fee they go to the resorts, experience the resort services. There's a resort experience which helps them to uh, add, uh, you know, uh, to their experiences. Uh, you know, the, every one of them has their bucket list, what they want to do at the resort. And once they come and engage in the happy hub, in the outdoor, uh, you know, experiences that we have created and for the children, all of that, is, is, is actually enabling them to enjoy vacation. And when people enjoy their vacations, food definitely becomes an important part of their vacation. And food is somewhere, is one area which we have focused on. We have launched new brands. I mentioned that. We are also creating more opportunities for people to bundle and pre-purchase the food offerings that we have. So we have all-inclusive plans. We have discounts. We have multiple kind of cuisines, multiple experiences, birthdays, anniversaries, Whatever kind of celebrations and whatever kind of F&B actions are required, we take on the ground to engage with members. So that's been a very big source for us to sort of uh, work. And to us, that represents a very important part of lifetime value because this is a high margin business, the F&B business, and that also helps us to next stage of uh, you know, value creation where the people begin to refer us uh, amongst their friends and that also helps us to lower the cost of acquisition when we go for referrals and that is why we do talk about the referral and the digital sales which is at a healthy 57 percent which helps us to reduce our cost of acquisition parallelly because after paying the annual fee the person has gone to resort fnb and holiday activity experiences have been uh, used consumed and of course there has been uh, money that has uh, there, there is an income as a result of that there are spa-related experiences at the resort which also help. Referral is something that I talked about. Some people choose to take the membership through the uh, EMI route. So the interest income also becomes an important part. And now let me move to the most interesting part that people do upgrade. And once they are in the resort, they want to upgrade to the higher season, higher apartment size, and that leads to another stream of income which we call as upgrades. And the upgrades is something that I talked about are very robust during this year. And uh, that's something that gives us the confidence that the members are enjoying their uh, holiday and they are trying to get more out of us by upgrading themselves. So this is how the uh, virtuous cycle continues. The only other thing I can add is that we are also using the critical mass that we have to offer experiences to our members, which is through the Horizon program, which is an exchange program, where members can bank their room nights and go to holidays even outside Club Mahindra. On, on top of that, we are offering some unique curated vacations with unique offers, like Ran of Kutch Festival, etc., etc., very special homestays, etc., fully managed. Those are the things that are offered to our members, and our members are uh, very happily taking it up. So there is this virtuous cycle of multiple annuity revenue streams, whether it is the membership fee, whether it is the annual fee, whether it is the interest income, whether it is the resort income, I mean speaking on financial terms, these that happen, in addition referrals happen, and upgrades of course becomes a part of membership income. And this is how this virtuous cycle we are continuing and the lifetime value will only increase as member cohort keeps on increasing, which is what you are seeing right now. Uh, understood, understood. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one.
The next question is in the line of Ankit Kanodia from SmartSync Services. Please go ahead. Thank you for allowing a follow-up. So uh, my next question was related to resort income. So even though uh, quarter four has been really good in terms of the uh, all-time high resort income, but when we look at the full year resort income, we see that uh, the best we did was in uh, FY20, that was around 228 crores. And uh, one thing which we see is that room rent as a percentage of resort income was was very high, uh, say, 8 to 10 years back, which is going down. And then now food and uh, beverages are slowly taking over that, and it is growing at a much faster pace. So I know you don't uh, give any forward-looking uh, guidance, but uh, is it fair to assume that the growth rate in F&B and thereby resort income would be much, much, much higher given our uh, number of members uh, uh, members addition has gone up over the last two, three years. And uh, based on that, any color or any uh, any view you would like to give? Uh, again, very, very good observation. Must uh, congratulate you for picking up this point. Uh, we believe that the real value in our business comes when not only we get the member in where they pay the membership fee, but also when they begin to enjoy the facilities. Because when they begin to enjoy the facilities, they pay the annual fee, okay, which obviously is not accounted as a room income. But the truth is that it is, it is a part of fulfillment of their obligation. And while it is classified as annual fee, but in a way, it is coming in to utilize the rooms that we have created. So there is an annual fee that comes in. There is an FNB income that comes in, there is a holiday activity income that comes in, and most important, which is most invaluable, is that this is, there is an opportunity to get the referrals and also upgrade the members. So the, the, the stream of, the stream of the multiple revenue streams that we can kick off, if we are able to get the member to come and holiday, and which is where uh, you have rightly picked up, our focus is members, and that is why you are seeing that the room, uh, you know, income has come down. It doesn't really worry us. And to answer your question that we did 228 crores, obviously, if we did not have the pandemic, we would have definitely crossed by now uh, that 228 crores by a wide margin. And I am very, very confident that if we do not face any, uh, you know, pandemic this year, we are definitely crossing that number by a wide margin. And as we add resorts, as more and more members come and holiday in our resorts and more and more members come in, this income is something you must watch out for. We are very confident of growing this income at a very accelerated pace because this is something that can be done and this is something which is what we are focused upon. Thank you so much. That really helps. Uh, one last question. Uh, uh, our Katalbat says that uh, we have recently increased our ASF uh, uh, fee. So is it correct? And if yes, uh, how has been the response with the members in terms of ASF? So in the annual fee, uh, please remember that we never increase the base fee. We only top it up to the extent of inflation. There is a formula of WPI and CPI, which we apply uniformly, which we have been applying over the years, which is a part of the membership condition. So the uh, formula got applied. Uh, the inflation uh, weighted average came to something like about 7.7 .7 or 7.8%. Uh, that's the number I remember. It got applied. The invoices got generated. And members are paying the annual fee, and they are holidaying, and our occupancies in April are at 90%. March, they were 90%, 89%. And we are seeing May, June also 89 89%. July, upwards of 80%. So the story is going on well, because the fact of the matter is that annual fee is a very small component. If you were to compare it today's prices, if we have to go and take similar quality rooms and vacation experiences, uh, uh, for the for the membership fee and for the annual fee, uh, it is a great value, and that is why that's fine. Hello. Hello. 
can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Really help if I can, if I may ask one last question. So uh, is it is it fair to uh, uh, is it fair to believe that uh, once uh, as in uh, can we have this uh, breakup of uh, the the refillables in terms of how much maybe in the next year onwards or next quarter onwards how much it uh, is uh, belongs to the vacation ownership uh, income and how much it is uh, for ASF? I think that would really help us to uh, to know where we are going. If that is possible, this is just a request. If that is possible, come. Um, Ankit, in our annual uh, accounts, we will be providing some more details uh, around the receivables. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjay Avatramani from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, sir, and thank you for giving me this opportunity. I just wanted to know any uh, capex plans uh, for the next two two and a half years. As you said that uh, we'll be increasing the room size. I mean, additional rooms by 900 to 1000. So if you can highlight the capex plans. Yeah, I have always been on record that we are trying to accelerate. We have a capital expenditure plan which was sanctioned about two years ago to about 1200 crores of capex. We are well on our way to execute that CAPEX plan in the next two to three years. And please remember the CAPEX will be utilized either to acquire a resort, to build our own resorts, and that is something that will remain, uh, a let, like uh, let's say in continuity, that continues to happen. And that is what would be the overall plan for us. And the good news for us is that despite the CAPEX, we will continue hopefully to grow our cash uh, balance and more importantly we are we are we are we are absolutely confident that the combination of building our own resorts acquiring leasing has worked very well for us so we have a clear strategy around uh, utilizing the cash also that we have okay, this is very helpful sir and uh, one last thing i mean uh, out of this 1200 crore what is the amount we've already spent and uh, what are we, I mean, additional, I mean, the balance amount, what will be that? Yeah, that's something that we will have to probably work this out because, you know, CapEx plans are continuing from one financial year to the other and into the plan period. You see what happens is when we plan for CapEx in FY19, uh, obviously some part of the CapEx has been spent and some more sanctions have been obtained. So it's kind of a rolling plan. We do not have a plan where we say, oh, so much has been spent, so much is less. But we can always top it up because once we see growth opportunity, we can constantly keep adding. And we can currently also say that over the next three to four years, you will see us spending about 1,000 to 1,200 crores for sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nagaraj Chandrasekhar from Labonin. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening, Kavender and team, and congratulations on another fantastic quarter and very strong stewardship of this company uh, over the last couple of years. Um, just a question on uh, what you mentioned on inflation in room rates finally turning on customers and them starting to realize this is a good model to have to lock in rates uh, for a 25-year period. I think this is the last time we saw this kind of inflation in room rents room rates was 2011, correct? And then we've had deflation for the next seven, eight years uh, post that. Um, you know, when inflation starts hitting the overall discretionary budget, you know, you will have the, you know, their ability to pay five, six lakhs for a membership being somewhat curtailed. Will you then be okay with wrapping up the EMI portion of our uh, sales or, or would you rather have a slower membership sort of add, but a cleaner membership add, you know, more upfront cash. How do you balance those two sort of competing pulls and takes? Very, very, uh, would say, very sharp and very insightful question. And this is exactly what we are right now busy doing. So there are various uh, tools in our toolbox. Number one tool is the multiple product types that we have. 2011, we had only one product type. 
Say we have clearly well defined three product types. We have a Gozes, which is a three year product. We have a, a Bliss, which is a 10 year product for people above 50. It's a points based product. And we have, we have those our flagship core uh, Club Mahindra 25 year product. Now, for us, for us, you know, depending on the life stage, uh, we believe that, uh, it, 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 you know, the, the, and also we cover various price points. If you look at the prices, we are covering virtually all price points. So at a combination of price point and the life stage, we have products to deal with uh, the, the, the issue that you raised. Uh, equally important is the opportunity to upsell. When a person joins in Guzest, would be uh, obviously after a good experience, he may consider, you know, upgrading to a 25-year, uh, you know, product. So for us, it is, it is, it is not not uh, about that people will find it difficult to buy, and therefore, uh, if we have multiple products. Who are in a position to satisfy the demand. Now, coming back to your second and and and, and equally important question. So, how do we, uh, you know, uh, you know, get growth, and also in some manner, uh, uh, you know, not not some manner actually get the growth and ensure that the quality member additions happen. And since we are insisting on higher down payment, you know, with the inflationary environment. Will it, will it sort of, you know, affect the growth because people may want to sort of not pay upfront so much and they may be open to looking at uh, EMI options. We, our EMI options continuing. The way we handle this is that people who are taking the EMI option get a lesser offer than the people who pay upfront. We do not, we have not stopped selling on EMI. We are happy to sell on EMI. Just that we will not give the offer that we give to a person who pays us higher fee upfront. So it is a way of changing the customer behavior to seek higher value. And my belief is value seeking behavior is not going away irrespective. So people feel that there is a value in doing higher down payment, they will pay. And some people feel that, hey, I cannot afford, I will only do 10% down payment, 15% down payment, 20%. Uh, down payment, whatever is the number, and we have certain policies around that, including the EMI tenures, because we don't give long EMI tenures, we have short EMI tenures, and then the person pick makes us pick. But obviously, the, the discounts and offers are closely correlated with the amount that you put up front. So I think we have an answer to this problem, and the answer is create a menu and let people pick and choose. And we, in either of the choice that you make, we are not going to be the losers. We are going to ensure that our objectives of growth and quality are met. Arista, thanks for that detailed uh, answer of how you're thinking through this. Uh, one more question is on on a long-term uh, shift in the model. Now you you mentioned a points model, and if you look at um, how this industry has evolved globally. The hotels players like your Marriott uh, uh, and etc. have split out holiday membership uh, entities, which operate on a points model. Um, are you at all thinking of such a model in the long run? Uh, shifts towards that in the long run, which sort of make it easier for even members who are on the fringe about wanting to commit to a 25-year product, uh, not knowing um, you know uh, how long they'll be in India or other questions. Um, is there any move towards such a such a sort of business model in the long run at all? And how do you so, think that impacts economics? Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, that is exactly the reason, and we are quite familiar with these business models around the world. We are in touch with these, uh, you know, we have association bodies through which we get to meet them. Last few, of course, one or two years, we haven't met this, we haven't met it. But the answer is very simple. In anticipation of this situation, we launched Gozest and Bliss, which are points-based products. Points-based products obviously have a huge advantage that uh, people can buy more points, they can burn their points faster. But remember one thing, uh, since we are at least in, in one point-based product like Bliss, you know, it is very critical for us to ensure that we get also an opportunity to upsell to you. So we do not wish that someone burns his points 
in the one year itself. So there is a concept of you know accrual of points which happens on a year on year basis. So if you want to burn higher number of points, you need to buy points. If you want to burn higher number of points, then what has been accrued to you in the year. Which means that you are trying to ensure that the person completes the tenure and particularly in a product like Bliss which is a points based product but also has an annual fee, you also collect your annual fee. And this is an important part of our, our consideration because our business is about lifetime value. Our business is about engaging at multiple points so that we are able to derive true value. As you know in this business the cost of acquisitions tend to be high. So it is, it is always a good idea to see if the person can have as long a tenure as he or she can have, which helps us to ma maximize our lifetime value and apportion our costs of acquisition over the tenure of the membership. So fundamentally, uh, the, the idea of points is there with us. Uh, the idea of ensuring that the person uh, does not finish his tenure by burning the points in one year is protected by the way the product is designed, thereby enhancing the uh, you know member lifetime value uh, for us and as well as for the member because when member interacts more, engages more, they get benefits and privileges which they would not get if they were trying to burn their points all at one go. So the points idea is implemented. Points idea has two variations. Bliss is a 10-year product which has ASF also. Gozest is a product which has no annual fee, so therefore Gozest is an entry level product and the best part of all these products is that ultimately you want them to graduate to a 25 year product because then they can enjoy longer and that is where the true value really resides in terms of price per room night. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the last question. I now have the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for uh, coming for this call. We always value the interest shown by all our uh, current investors, potential investors, analysts, and all interested people. It's always an honor uh, to sort of share views. And most importantly, with your sharp questioning and insights, we get to know what your expectations are. And we will re we remain you know, committed to ensuring that we come up to your expectations and we keep building the company from strength to strength. On that note, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Mahindra Holidays and Resorts India Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.